So everything is going to be in the square scale. But then I can just uh, get a square root to solve my problem of scale. All right? So 2.0025 squared is something very close to zero. I, Excel helped me with that. Uh, 0.0475 squared is 0.0023. No magic here. Okay? Do I proceed? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to sum everything that is squared. This is just a sum. Excel can help with that too. And that gives me this final number here. 0.05715. What does it mean? So far, nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a way to get where we are going. Okay? Good. It turns out that this number is the denominator. It's this part here. Remember that I told you we had to sum all z squared? It's this thing here. Pretty easy, right? Is that easy? Good. Now we need to figure out what the hell is this one. It's Wij, and then we are multiplying z. It should be pretty easy. Zi, Zj, not a problem. And then we're going to sum this thing too. All right. We step a little, uh, we step back a little, and now we're going to do what Dr. Sokol did. We're going to create a, the W matrix, which is the matrix of spatial relationships. The spatial relationships between eight sites. According to this map, as you can see, is point one, here is point one, related to point two? Is it? Is it related to point three? Is site one related to site three? Who thinks it is? Who think it is, it is not? Who doesn't think anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, it's not. It's not related to point three. Point one is related to point two, two and point six. Point two is related to point three, but not point one. Otherwise, there will be a line connecting one to three. Okay? So, point one is related to point three only indirectly. And therefore, we can build this vector. This vector tells me to what sites point one is related to. And zero is not related at all. And one is, yes, indeed related. So point one is only related to point one, two and six. To which points is point two related? Point number three and point number one. Therefore, we can expect point two to be related to point three. And I left this blank because I have already connected one to two. Connected two to one is just the same thing. Okay? Now to which points are point three connected? Yeah, but that's the only this same one right here, which I didn't bother to fill. 
Now we can do this to every single point and in the end we're gonna have this half matrix it's only half because the upper side is just the mirror image of the lower side can everybody see that? okay so now we have all points connected to everything and this matrix tells me that how many connections do we have? We have eight connections. Anyone else? We can go back to that later, but in the meantime, you keep thinking about it. Okay, now what we're going to do is to solve this, all right? It, it looks ugly, I can tell, <laughs> but it should be pretty simple. Look at this. This is our Z variable, right? Do you remember that number? That one? Okay. Now what we're going to do is to multiply this one for all the other ones. And then we multiply this one to everyone else. And then this one, everyone else. So we're going to multiply everything by everything. Right? So it's pretty easy to do in the computer, but it's time consuming when you do in the, in the uh, pen and paper. However, we are not going to only multiply the z values. We're going to multiply the result of this multiplication by their connection. Okay? So is point one connected to point two? Look here. I, is it? Okay. Then WIJ must be 1. Okay? And now I'm going to get this Z value here, which is Z1, and this is Z2. I'm going to multiply them. And according to this formula here, I must multiply Z1, Z2, and WIJ which is W12. Okay, then the result is this, which is 0.0025 times minus 0.1475 times 1. Okay, that's the result. Now I'm going to multiply 0.1 and 0.3, which must be 0 0.025 times 1, 3, 2, 5. Here they are. And then I'm going to multiply that by their connection. What is their connection? Zero. Any number multiplied by zero? Zero. So, in fact, in this analysis, things that are not connected are ignored. They, they don't count. I'm only going to count things that are connected. Of course, I could think of a number that is between 1 and 0. I could make things half connected. And then it would count half. Okay? Or I could think, I could think of something that is twice as connected. Then I'm going to have a number 2 for the connection. I can come up with any possible scenario that I think it's reasonable, given the biology of what I'm studying. And then we just sum this thing. It's good, there's going to be a lot of zeros and some numbers. Okay? But in the end, 
I have to sum this. Easy? How easy is that? Very easy, easy, medium, medium. Okay, you like medium things? Medium, medium rare. Uh, okay, so only connections count, and other than that, we multiply numbers and sum them in the end. Okay, so the sum of WIJ, ZI, ZJ is this number here, which happens to be negative. And this number over here comes directly to this place. Okay? We already know this. Now we just need to figure out what is N and what is this W uh, uppercase. Okay? All right, here they are, and lowercase, it's usually uh, the number of sites we have, or the number of units in the analysis, which happens to be eight. And W uppercase, it's not seven, it's 14. Why is it 14 and not seven? Sorry? It's only half the matrix. Yeah, I was showing only half of the matrix. But there are connections in both directions. So I must multiply the number of connections by two. Okay? And then here is our Moran's I. Minus negative zero one four seven one one. Okay? What does that mean? That's what re really matters. Doing the math is not biology. Well, let's think about it. I, I, I tell this to my students. I teach biostats. I, I always say this. Some, um, uh, in the statistical method, is only useful when, number one, you are capable of calculating the result in pen and paper. If, it doesn't mean you should do that, because it's going to take your time. But you must be capable of doing that. And here I'm showing you, there's no magic here. It's just some subtractions, additions, so it should be easy. But also very important, you have to be able to interpret whatever that means, whatever the result means. Reporting that whatever Moran's I is minus 0 0.147 doesn't mean anything to any biologist on Earth. So let's think about it. The Z value is a variable that has been centralized. We have calculated Z as the subtraction between the original wing length and the average wing length. It means what? If this Z is positive, what does that mean? Well, Z is wing of a fly minus the average. So if it's positive, what is larger than what? The length of the, the average wing is, is longer than the average. The length of the wings at that point is longer than the average. Yes. So if Z is a positive value, it means that that particular site has flies 
with larger wing lengths than the average for all sites. Okay? The opposite applies to a negative number. So if you happen to find a negative Z value for a given site, it means that the flies that live there have shorter wing lengths than the average for the entire sites. And now let's think about this multiplication here. That's the most interesting part. Every time you look at a statistical index, look at the numerator. It, it, it measures what it actually means. The denominator is just to standardize. So every time you look at a statistical index, look at the numerator. Measures effect. Okay, now let's multiply zi and zj. Suppose, for example, we are comparing a site with a positive z. What a positive z means? Longer wings than average. And now we are comparing this one, which happens to be connected to another one, which also has positive z. Now we are comparing two ones that happen to be larger than average. We multiply them and the final result is positive or negative? Positive. It's positive. So in this sum over here, is it counting upwards or downwards? Is it adding or subtracting to the final value? It's adding. Now let's do the opposite. Suppose we find a site that has very low Z value and we are comparing it with another site with very low Z value. What, what a negative or negative Z value means? Smaller than the average. So these two numbers are negative. We multiply them and they get what? They get positive. We multiply two negative numbers, they get positive. So I'd, are they adding or subtracting to the final I value? They are again adding because they are both similar with relation to the mean. And now the final scenario is, imagine we are contrasting a site with very large and positive Z value and it happens to be connected to a site with very low negative value. The final product is going to be what? A negative value. And is it going to add or subtract to the final I value? It's going to subtract. So it's simple like that. We are just adding stuff when they are similar. When they are dissimilar, we subtract stuff. So if this number gets positive and very high, what do you expect? A lot, lot of similarity. If this number gets negative and very low, what do you expect? Things that are connected are very dissimilar, right? Well, this denominator here happens to play a magic trick. It's supposed to have the largest possible value. So when you are dividing an observed value by its maximum possible value, what is the range of i? 